Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a black-green Delirium deck featuring Ishkana Graf Widow as our commander, voted on by my supporters on Patreon, although this is almost as much an Emrakul deck as it is an Ishkana deck, so if you're interested in casting maybe even 5 mana Emrakuls, then this may be the deck for you. So first off, let's take a look at our commander. Ishkana, a 5 mana, 3 5 legendary spider with a reach, and Delirium says when Ishkana enters the battlefield, if we have 4 or more card types among cards in our graveyard, we get to create three 1-2 green spider creature tokens with reach, and then for 7 mana, target opponent loses one life for each spider we control. I've seen other Ishkana lists out there that focus more on the spider tribal synergies, instead here we're focusing more on the delirium synergies to make sure we can consistently cast Emrakul. And the first category of this deck are the Delirium payoff cards, which include Traverse the Ulvenwald, a 1 mana sorcery, get to search for a basic land card and reveal it, put it into our hands. If we have Delirium enabled, meaning 4 or more card types among cards in our graveyard, instead search your library for a creature or land card, reveal it and put it into your hand. So you can find a non-basic land as well, but for the most part we're interested in finding Amrakul, the Promised End, a 13 mana 13-13 legendary Eldrazi, costs 1 generic less to cast for each card type among cards in our graveyard, and just as a refresher, card types include Creature, Instant, Sorcery, Artifact, Enchantment, Planeswalker, and one that's not even listed in this is Tribal. And we have one Tribal card on Arena, and let's see if you can spot it. It's Altar of the Goyf, a 5 mana Tribal Artifact. That's also Lurgoyf, a very strange card from Modern Horizons, but Tribal does add another card type to our graveyard, which means we can potentially discount Emrakul all the way down to 5 mana if we have all 8 of those different card types in the graveyard, and a 5 mana Emrakul sounds like quite the bargain. Altar of the Goyf also just a nice Delirium payoff card, saying whenever a creature we control attacks alone, it gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of card types among cards in all graveyards, and the Lurgoyf creatures we control have Trample, and we do have one Lurgoyf Lurgoyf in the deck, the classic Tarmogoyf, a 2 mana Lurgoyf creature, powers equal to the number of card types among cards in all graveyards, including the opponents, and its toughness is equal to that number plus 1. So, very flavorful card in this deck, can combo it with our altar, but altar by itself, very important, just adding an extra card type to our graveyard if we happen to mill it or discard it, and then also can maybe pump up the spider tokens from Ishkana to deal a ton of damage. And then we also have a Grim Flare, another great Delirium payoff card, 2 mana, 2-2 two, two Trampler. When it deals combat damage to a player, we get to surveil 3, so we can potentially mill the top 3 cards of our library into our graveyard if we want to, or maybe keep some powerful cards on top. And if we have Delirium enabled, it gets plus 2, plus 2, so then it turns into a 4-4 four, four Trampler, which is quite powerful for just 2 mana. And then Consuming Blob is another awesome payoff, very similar to Tarmogoyf in Power and Toughness, except it only looks at our graveyard and not the opponent's. And then at the beginning of our end step, we get to make an Ooze token, which has that same power and toughness. So the Blob and its Ooze tokens can grow incredibly large in this deck, up to 8 power. And then the next category are the Delirium Enablers, usually cheap cards to put a few cards in our graveyard from our library, hopefully enabling Delirium for us. And of course it's also very important in any Ishkana deck focusing on Delirium that we have a nice spread of card types, as we can see 14 creatures, 10 instant, 9 sorcery, 10 artifact, 11 enchantment, 9 planeswalker, and then the 1 tribal as well. So having a good spread of those card types is also vital. And then we have a Mishra's Bauble, a zero mana artifact that will just replace itself, so it can cheaply add artifact to our graveyard. We've got a Warlock class, which on level 2 lets us take a look at the top 3 and put one in hand at the rest in our graveyard, also an enchantment itself, and can maybe level it up all the way to then deal double the amount of damage, also quite synergistic with Ishkana if we have a lot of mana available. Vessel can also add a ton of cards in our graveyard, including enchantment once we sacrifice it, so another great addition from a Shadows Remastered. And then a Mulch, another classic, can reveal multiple lands to put in hand as the rest goes into our graveyard. Same with the Wayfinder. Then the Jukai Visionary, an enchantment creature, also counts as multiple card types. So if we mill it, it's quite useful. And if we activate it, we can also put additional cards into our graveyard, potentially channel it in the late game as well to get back some non-legendary cards from our graveyard into our hand. 
Then uh, teachings and binding are sagas that can also mill three on the first chapter, so those are all quite useful at enabling delirium. Grizzly Salvage gets to take a look at the top five cards, put a creature or land in hand, and the rest into our graveyard. Wither Bloom Command can also mill a few cards with the various modes and potentially return a land from our graveyard to our hand. Can maybe take out an opposing smaller creature with one toughness, or take out a non land permanent with mana value two or less. And then Old Rutstein can also mill every turn and the turn we played as well, making treasure tokens, blood tokens, and insect tokens in the process. Renan 7 can make large tree folk, but can also just use a plus ability to mill four cards, so it's essentially the same as Mulch, finding a lance in the process to put in hand. And then a Cavalier of Thorns can also enter, helping us ramp by putting a land in play from the top five, and the rest also ends up in our graveyard. And then when it dies, we can potentially return a card from our graveyard on top of our deck. Another way to maybe get back an Amrakul if we happened to mill it, and there's plenty more ways to get back cards from our graveyard as well. And then the next category is Ramp, since we are trying to cast some expensive spells, and we also want to make sure we have enough mana to cast Amarcool consistently, so Mana Acceleration is always a great idea in Historic Brawl, also makes it easier to replay your commander if it dies, and Ishkan also needs 7 mana to activate, so lots of mana is required. Dark Ritual especially powerful at ramping out a Planeswalker ahead of schedule, Got the two one mana elves. Also, as a side note, if your commander has a green white color identity, don't forget to add the new Avacyn's Pilgrim in your ramp decks. Then there's Explorer and Into the North to potentially put an extra land in play. Have a few snow covered basics to find with Into the North. Then Haven, an enchantment that can enchant our land to make extra green. Got some ramp artifacts Signet, Cold Steel Heart, and Mindstone. Then Cultivate and Harrow. Or additional ways to get extra lands in play. Harrow also sacrifices a land in the process, so we'll add instant and land to our graveyard, and then the lands will enter untapped. And then Heraldic Banner naming green, also quite synergistic with the spider tokens from Ishkana, which will get one additional power. The Celestis can also help us discard, putting additional card types in the graveyard. Then a Solemn is always useful, helps us find a land when it enters, draws a card when it dies, counts as both an artifact and a creature for delirium purposes. And Nissa is also quite good in a deck with a lot of forests, as it can potentially double our mana. And then we've got some interaction as well, starting with Thought Seize as Hand Disruption, a few spot removal spells, including Go for the Throat, Heartless Act, and the new Shieldred's Edict can also make the opponent sacrifice a creature, or maybe even a Planeswalker. Masked Vandal is pretty easy to enable, can just exile a creature from our graveyard to then exile an opposing artifact or enchantment. Then a Terra Sunder can be cast for 2 mana or kicked for 4 mana to take out artifacts and enchantments, or maybe just any opposing and non-land permanent for 4 mana. Elspeth's Nightmare keeps being impressive, can take out a small creature with the first chapter, chapter 2 counts as another discard effect, and then we can eventually exile the opponent's graveyard. Got the two Lilianas. Liliana of the Veil can make the opponent sacrifice creatures or make them discard. Liliana the Last Hope is also excellent as it can mill additional cards with a minus two while returning a creature from our graveyard to our hand. So it can also maybe get back an Amarcool if we happen to mill it. And then a plus one is excellent against opposing one toughness creatures. Extinction Event is the only real sweeper we're playing. Nice to have access to at least one sweeper in case we need to tutor it up. And Garrick Relentless seemed like a fun addition from Innistrad Remastered. Can use it to make wolf tokens or maybe fight smaller creatures from the opponent, transforming in the process. And then the Veil Cursed can also minus one to tutor for a creature and put it in hand. So that's another way of finding Emrakul. Then we've got Binding, can take out imposing a non-land permanent and then ramp on chapter two. Vraska is also quite versatile. We have plenty of permanents we don't mind sacrificing, like our very spider tokens to the plus two ability. And then a minus three can also take out non-land permanents with mana value three or less. Death Sprout, similar to Binding, takes out an opposing creature while helping us ramp. And then a Dreadhorde General's minus 4 ability can also be very powerful. Draws cards when our creatures die, also very good with our spider tokens. And then Relic Seeker, another versatile answer to various card types. And Casualties of War, another mainstay in these black-green brawl decks, destroying multiple card types at once. And then our final category is the miscellaneous section, including Malachi Rebirth, can be used to save Ishkana from removal, and then when it enters the battlefield again, we get to make more spider tokens. Once upon a time can be cast for free if it's our first spell we cast in a game, and then we'll add instant to the graveyard, and then we can maybe find a cheap mana elf or just make sure we keep hitting our land drops. Arena for card advantage. Good Corsair of Crufix can gain some life, counts as both creature and enchantment, and can also play lands of the top of our deck, similar to Oracle of Moldaya. And there's quite a few shuffle effects in our deck as well, between fetch lands and sorceries that find lands, so we can maybe reshuffle the top of our deck to find more lands to play for free. 
Then a Conduit of Worlds also has been quite impressive in this deck, as we'll end up with a ton of permanents in our graveyard that we can eventually replay with a Conduit. can also let us replay a lands, so we're never going to miss another land drop. And then a Spider Queen is also excellent alongside Ishkana. Even though we're not focusing on the Spider Tribal synergies, this just happens to make Spider tokens and can also provide more card advantage. If our Spiders end up dying to a Sweeper, then a Spider Queen gains a ton of loyalty and can potentially minus 8 or just keep making more Spider tokens with Reach and Menace. And then a Cruelty of Gix, also great, can start from any chapter, potentially tutoring up Emrakul with chapter 2, can take away creatures or planeswalkers with chapter 1, and eventually can also return a creature from any graveyard onto the battlefield under our control. And then a mana base includes a few fetch lands, which also have great synergy with Delirium. We have lots of mana fixing, as you can see, with our various dual lands. And then plenty of basics to search up and to make sure our lands come into play untapped for the most part. A few utility lands, including the two castles, the black one for card advantage, the green one very useful in maybe ramping out a creature ahead of schedule, can also be useful with Ishkana's ability, as it will essentially give us one extra mana to work with. Couple snow lands for Into the North. Buseju can be channeled to take out artifacts or enchantments, and then it ends up in our graveyard where we can either get it back or just count as an extra card type. The Sanctum of Nature is also excellent, can mill additional cards into our graveyard, and then potentially enable Delirium that way. And then the Abandoned Mire also happens to mill a few cards while getting back a creature or planeswalker from our graveyard. So plenty of synergy in our mana base. Phyrex and Tower also quite good with our spider tokens, as we can sacrifice them to add a double black. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a solid hand facing blue-black artifact. Kick things off with a free once upon a time. Maybe look for an early mana elf. Alright, turn one Lanner Elves seems good. Could play turn two Nightmare. Or just uh, Wayfinder plus Warlock class. Okay, opponent can run out a turn two Tezzeret thanks to Dark Ritual. Pretty good too. Makes a treasure. So we've got our work cut out for us. I think it's gonna be Wayfinder plus Warlock class. Unless we want to attack Tezzeret, which is also reasonable, just play Wayfinder attack for one. Next turn I'm gonna have access to four mana potentially. If there's no target for Nightmare I would be better off activating Warlock class and casting a Grizzly Salvage. So yeah, I'm just gonna play Wayfinder and class here. Poseidon could also come in handy. And we already have Delirium enabled off a single Wayfinder. And I guess uh, Once Upon a Time also helped. But yeah, turn two Tezzeret's quite powerful. Can kill our elf. My and a tablet. So we can level up our class as opposed to go for Grizzly Salvage. Finding a Fabled Passage, Altar going to the graveyard is also nice. And then we already have seven card types. Can play Castle and hit Tezzeret for one. So this could be a fun game for a potential Emrakul. So we wouldn't be able to Cavalier on turn four now that the Elf is gone. Tazeret aggressively using its minus ability. Haven's not bad, can play Haven and then still Nightmare. Although there may be a counter spell in our future. Alright, that worked. And then next turn Cavalier. Or we can go for Ishkana to kind of go wide. Will bend to my will. Tablet's still gonna take a while before it starts drawing cards, but could already make some extra mana soon. And a Cruelty, but first we can check out their hand with Nightmare. And yeah, there is a counter spell, which we can take. And then can cast Cruelty, although wouldn't be starting from chapter 1. 
So Ishkana makes spiders, could be better than Cavalier. Both are reasonable. Cavalier ramps us and fills the graveyard. Ishkana does a better job of pressuring Tezzerets. So we'll try that one. Kicked into the Royal to bounce Ishkana. That's fine. And then Cruelty with Chapter 2 could find Emrakul. Ooh, Rusko is always scary. Your end is near. And a Chromatic Star. Opponent can cycle it. We'll get a forest. And then we have quite a few options here. And <laughs> there's Emrakul. Just top decking it also works, I guess. So, do we just cast Emrakul? That seems pretty good. And then if I deal one to Tesserets, we can finish it off with a minus two next turn. And then we can take out Rusko. Six man Emrakul. Quite the bargain. Could keep Bosejo in hand, and I might actually do that. Can still channel it for single mana here once we have an Emrakul in play. So let's take the opponent's turn here. Midnight Clock gets a counter and a mist. Let's see, two mana, return target non-token, online permanent to Sutter's hand. If this was kicked, conjure a duplicate of that card into your hand. Okay. So step one's probably minus two on Rusko. Decline to put Tazard back in the command zone. So that's in the graveyard for good. And then Mist. What do we want to bounce? Can maybe reset Midnight Clock or Tablets. Can maybe draw with Chromatic Star, see what's next. Should have tapped the River for Colored Mana to deal the opponent one damage. The Auto Tapper is uh, giving the opponent a break here, but uh, opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, up against a Rien Multicolor deck. Got a decent start here. Couple of tap lines. Didn't think I need to scry right away, so we'll just play the bridge. And then... Could play turn 2 Haven. That seems fine. Next turn we could Nightmare if there's a target for it. This one sadly has 3 power, so it doesn't die to the Nightmare. Can try to combine Command to shrink it down and then Nightmare, but that will have to wait, so we will need to get double black in play. Dark Ritual. Can maybe speed up casualties. Yeah, I'll try it. And then no play for now. Chromatic Lantern. Gives us another target for casualties. Artifact, creature, and land. And this is the only red source. We'll have to start milling ourselves to enable Delirium. Millira makes a treasure. Another creature that doesn't die to the Nightmare. Although Heartless Act could work. So, maybe start with a Witherbloom command, can destroy the treasure and look for land. If 
found one. And then I could still conduits. Sure. And then we've got a visionary that we can maybe play next turn. Although more likely to just play my commander. Okay, so let's see here. Can play lands and then still have delirium for Ishkana. And then we've already cast a permanent, so we wouldn't be able to play visionary here. Merriment, okay. Don't think we need to Heartless Act Melira, although I guess we may as well, since if we save it for Rien, our opponent can just sacrifice Melira to protect it. Cavalier was a nice pickup, so play Cavalier. Find a Fabled Passage, although I guess I'm better off just grabbing a, a different land. Since Fabled Passage is good value with Conduits. And then I could wait on Nightmare until our opponent finds a token that we can take out. Can start draining with Ishkana as well. So, yep, yeah, pass it back. Three one also dodges nightmare. Can thin out a deck a little bit. Okay. So we could go for Liliana of the Veil. Which can minus, make them sack the token. That seems reasonable. When I win, you're telling me what you know about the Raven Man. Oh, I've always and then we can attack with our Cavalier. Play Fabled Passage. And then we'll be able to still activate Ishkana. Can do that at instant speed. So that'll drain for 4. Bottom gets another 4 1 Trampler. Of course, pumped by Rien. Otherwise, just a 3 1. Okay, Drist is a good one. And then of turn we can drain for four. So we can just replay Solemn out of the graveyard. Or Visionary, which can then maybe pick up casualties again. That might be reasonable. Okay. Get back Visionary. And Fable Passage. And then now I'll hang back. Activate Ishkana. Opponent got a Life Linker, which can keep them alive here since otherwise we could just kill them with Ishkana. But now Jetmir will pump the team. So, activate Ishkana. Can line up some blocks. Do we have enough toughness to survive here? Points trampling for 8, plus 7 is 15, plus 6, 21. So, yeah, we should be able to survive. I will have to throw a visionary under the bus here.
Okay. Spider Queen's pretty useful too. So I could just minus two Liliana twice, which would be my entire turn gone. Although maybe that's good enough. We'll have to keep Cavalier back on defense. But that would clean up Jetmir and Drizzt. We'll start here, see what they do. If they sacrifice Jetmir, then we can easily chum block Drizzt. Opponent keeps Jetmir. It's not a huge threat right now. So maybe I just replay Ishkana and Spider Queen. Sure. And then Cavalier should be safe to attack. Okay, opponent could potentially deal one here, but that would still keep us alive. Finds a life linker, and then next turn we'll have six spider tokens to activate Ishkana. Trostani, okay. So they don't trample at least, just plus one plus zero, and then uh, vigilance as well. So this seems fine. Just trade and block the token. Spider Queen will pick up a bunch of loyalty. Can play Corsair, see what's on top. And Nightmare finally has a target as well. So Vrask on top can shuffle with Fabled Passage. Could draw it with Spider Queen, but I'm happy making tokens. And then Nightmare still leaves enough mana to activate Ishkana. This will drain for five. Opponent is still at four, but we should be able to cross the finish line next turn. Okay, ended up being a pretty close game, lots of back and forth. Good to see some powerful multicolor spells. Just gotta watch out that we don't take a lethal trample damage. Fine to throw Corsair under the bus. Alright, GG's. I'll just activate Ishkana to close out the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, up against a Monorat Koth deck. And what do we think of our hand? Grimflare probably dies before we can uh, get any value from it. Even if it is a 4-4, it still dies to Koth. So this may not be our best hand. This seems much better. Got a bit of ramp that's harder for Monorad to interact with. And then... No need to reveal, but sure. Want to prioritize playing our forests for Nyssa. Cliff Stomper also good in a Monorad deck. So next turn we can Banner, still play either Wayfinder or Mulch. And then Nissa is looking good. Okay, Crater Maker can blow up my Mindstone here. That's gonna slow us down a bit. Okay, Haven lets me double spell this turn, so that seems slightly better. And then Mulch gives me a better shot at finding more forests. 
Whereas Wayfinder protects our Planeswalker a bit better, so that may still be the play. Find a castle. And we have just the two card types in Graveyard, Artifact and Creature. Alright, there's Koth. Gate does count as a mountain, so still good with Koth and Cliff Stomper. Banner does not pump the forest from Nyssa, since those are still considered colorless. But I'm still happy to play Nyssa, attack, and then I can still mulch second main. And then maybe keep Wayfinder back to chump the Cliff Stomper. Get out of my way. Okay, enchantments added to the graveyard, so now we have a Delirium online. Koth could minus on the Wayfinder, but it's gonna keep plussing. And if we get to untap with Nissa, that would be great. Ishkana also good at protecting it. Alright, Wayfinder down. So they can attack Nissa and then maybe flash back Light of the Knights. Or add a Chandra to the board. So now we have two Planeswalkers to deal with. And is there another burn spell? Looks like it. Ouch. So Pun has two Planeswalkers in play, we have none. Thoughtseize is a bit late to the party. Attack, play Ishkana and Thoughtseize. That's probably the play here. And then between Koth and Chandra. Probably pressure Chandra, although both are problematic. Yeah, maybe still go for Chandra since Koth they can replay more easily. Alright, Ugin is gone. And then next turn Banner pumping our spiders at least gets us a bit more damage in. Yep. Chandra found Strike at Rich, that's fine. So one unknown in hand. A Light of the Night can be flashed back. And Koth could still minus here on Ishkana or the forest. And a Lightning Axe was their last unknown. Pretty good here. Send that back to the command zone. At least Castle makes it slightly easier to replay. And a Dust Sprout was a great draw. So can we Banner and Sprout? Should be possible. We'll name Green. And take out Chandra and Koth. So we're back on the board. Opponents empty handed. And then our Goth can help fill the graveyard, make more tokens. Can replay Ishkana. And start draining the opponent with our spiders. They still have their uh, gate to seek an online card with as well, if I'm not mistaken. Opponent's got a removal spell for a spider token. So can't quite finish off Koth here. But at least we can prevent him from using a minus three. So a sweeper could still be quite backbreaking. And our opponent seems to be playing some pretty powerful curve toppers, so the game's far from over. Right, opponent seeks an online card. 
I wonder how close we are to closing out the game if we just start going face here. Can drain for six, and yeah, opponent packs it in. If we drain for six, attack all out, that's another 14, so that's 20 damage. And uh, yeah, it doesn't take much to close out the game from there, either by activating Ishkana once again. Can also present a bit of inevitability with a Sanctum of Nature. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, up against a Taisa Black-White Death Trigger deck. And what do we think of our hands? No acceleration, bit of early interaction. This one's borderline, can probably do better. Although, command's definitely tempting, as it helps with Ishkana, but we also have a few tap lands early on, which could be awkward. Okay, this seems better. Turn on Elves, turn two. Can Vessel Sacrifice, or maybe mix in a Thought Seize as well. Okay, Pony's got the Fatal Push, sadly. Can still Vessel and Thought Seize here. Okay, Corpse Knight and Celebrant. Bunch of lands and a Lantern. Cannot take out a Lantern with command and doesn't take out any of the two drops so probably go for like a corpse knight here hits a bit harder than celebrants although celebrant has better synergy with taisa okay i'm cool something worth building towards so just gonna sank Vessel, see what else we pick up. And sure, we'll play Untapped Land in case I draw another Elf. Okay, just all lanes. So, we have Delirium enabled at least. We have Land, Enchantment, Sorcery, Creature. And then next round we could Wither Bloom Command, mill a few more cards, hopefully discount Emrakul. Would love to find some ramp. Okay, go for the Throat can answer Tessa at least. So drain for two and mill. Okay, Planeswalker and Instant as well. So seven mana Emrakul's looking realistic. So we've got Ishkana on six mana, no play, and then on seven Emrakul. Key to the archive is a good one. Do I still go for the Throat Corpse Knight? Yeah, especially now that our opponent has a key in play, they'll easily be able to replay Taisa. So I feel fine tapping out for go for the Throat. Opponent got rid of a deadly dispute. Solemn's good too. Could just ramp me into an Emrakul next turn. Although Ishkana into Solemn and then Emrakul gives the opponent more time to develop their board, so Emrakul is actually more effective. Sure. Approach is what our opponent found of key, so that's their win condition here. Fair enough. Okay. So let us attack. Explore and Solemn. Hope they play Taisa so we can run it into our Emrakul. Could also just play Conduit, which replays a land, which also gets Emrakul down. Don't think it matters too, too much. I guess the upside of Conduit is if something bad happens to Emrakul, I can replay it more easily. Right, there's Daisa. All according to plan. And a Grim Tutor. Uh-oh. Opponent can find Approach and win the game if they recast it. So how do we stop them from doing that? Thought sees I cannot get back with Conduit. So, we may just be dead here. 
if our opponent searched up approach. Cruelty does not make them discard. Approach, I could go for chapter 2. Search any card in my deck, but I don't have a Thought Seize left to search up. Do we have anything else that can maybe take away an approach? Can't think of too much. I would have to look up the wording on approach. What happens if we cast approach? I think the opponent still wins. But maybe this could be a fun experiment. See what happens if we Emmer cool and then approach while controlling the opponent. Uh, so, replay Fable Passage. And I'm cool. And then no great attacks. Opponent did indeed get approach. Alright. And Adlin. So, do I just win the opponent the game here? I mean, they're gonna cast it next turn anyway, so may as well try. Thank with Taisa. And we'll see what happens. Can decline to put Taisa back in the command zone, which is pretty fun too here. Alright, let's see if we're dead. Yep. <laughs> Alright, we won the opponent the game here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Up against the Toymaker, a Beast and Bird deck. So what do we think of this opener? Visionary should survive, and then we can activate it turn 3, sets up our Conduit. Yeah, I'll try it. Opponent with a turn 1 Grazer is a beast. Alright. Visionary better stick around here. And then we could see turn 4 Spider Queen. Cruelty could also come in handy. And our opponent's got a turn 3 Toymaker here, if they have a land. So that's also quite impressive. Mind Cruelty, check out their hand, take away their most impactful creature. So Tonus also doesn't get to go off necessarily. Okay. Blob in the graveyard, enchantment and land. So, a time for cruelty. And opponent did have a Gergroth in hand, so they'll still be able to double Contaminator. But Gergroth is good to get rid of. And then we can eventually bring it back with a final chapter. And then I guess we could get our one Sweeper here too. Extinction event would clear the opponent's board. The token also has an odd mana value. So I'm down. Is there any better alternative? I guess this also counts as an artifact, so we could go for like casualties of war, take out artifacts, creature land. Um, Amrakul's always tempting. I have only three card types in graveyard, so that's gonna take a while to set up. Yeah, I'm gonna go with extinction events. And then can Arcane Signets and still Event. And now the board looks a lot more manageable. Next turn get back Gergroth. And then Conduit can also get back Vassal at some point or Blob. Could have also gotten our own Blob back, but I'm kind of liking Gergroth here. Okay, so Ishkana can make spiders, can still play Visionary, or we can go for Spider Queen first. Yeah, what's the worst case scenario here? Maybe a River's Rebuke, which was a reason not to get back the opponent's creature. Either way, I guess Ishkana's fine. Play Visionary and pass it back. And there's Toymaker again. So can play Conduit and then still have mana for Spider Queen. 
That seems decent. I'll keep Boseju in the graveyard as my only lands for the time being. What's next? If I activate Ishkana next turn, we're threatening quite a lot of damage. Crater Hoof times two. Alright, not bad. Don't think we're dead, but uh Pwn can maybe force a few chum blocks. Opponent goes all out. Now we have to keep in mind Rejuvenation is still quite good with uh, Crater Hoof in play with mana value 8. So despite it shrinking back down next turn, it's still going to be pretty impactful. So I may want to find an instant speed answer to Crater Hoof, take out the other one using Cruelty here. Uh, alternatively, can I just kill my opponent next turn if we just take a bit of a hit? I'll have to jump with a few creatures, but we are also threatening a lot of damage on the way back. So that's currently 26 damage coming in. So I need to soak up at least 8 damage. So I can maybe block like so, take out Toymaker, and then take 18. Garagroth can either draw or gain life. And then next turn I'm attacking for how much? Could minus Spider Queen potentially again which will give me two more spiders, and then I can drain for seven and attack for another seven, eight, nine, which would be enough if they decide to kill the spider token. Yeah, that seems fine. And then I guess making a beast gives us an even better shot at lethal next turn. Alright. Cash in for spiders. Activate Ishkana. And attack all outs should do it. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw and seems promising. Explore into hopefully turn 3 Binding or Oracle. And now Haven also an option. Do I keep Elves? I think I do, since I can explore and still play Elves next turn. Opponent's got the Signet for ramp. And then ideally we pick up more lands to make use of Oracle. You can also use Harrow as a kind of shuffle effect to make sure we see some lands on top. And then our opponent on a Sultai enchantment deck, so Binding can maybe take care of Tatsunari. Opponent main phasing Omen to maybe hit their land drop. Alright, this can give their creature tokens flying. Can play Oracle after playing Haven, and then still maybe play Land of the Top. Right, just a dark ritual. Could still help out in ramping out an Emrakul. And then next turn I can maybe use Harrow as a shuffle effect. Just make sure we don't sacrifice our swamp. It's gonna be a Grim Tutor. Okay, not sure what they're planning to find this early in the game. Could be like a dead weight take out Oracle. But our opponent's going big. Play line of the top. Arena. Would be a fine draw, but don't necessarily need it. Can go for Harrow to shuffle. And a Warlock class is next. Do I want a Binding anything? Could take out the Signets, slow them down, that seems fine. And then how close are we to casting an Emrakul next turn? Pretty close. Warlock class can also fill the graveyard some more. 
And then we might just go for Ishkana. Binding is gonna force a shuffle, sadly, so can't play that line of the top. Extinction event is next. So Warlock class activates. And Vessel seems good. Line on top, ideal. And then Vessel activates. Uh, Ishkana doesn't have Delirium enabled yet. But this should help. And then grab a Mystic, let Enchantment go to the graveyard. And then now, still play Fabled Passage. Can shuffle away Boseju. And then next turn we can certainly Amra Cool. Although going for Dark Ritual, Ishkana is also decent. And then I can still Mystic. Now Amrakul's not going to be at its best when the opponent doesn't have a lot of lands in play. But uh, could still be fun to take a look. Luckily we enchanted our basic land with Haven, which is always a good habit. So they won't be able to take it out with Field of Ruin. They do get to shuffle away Liliana. But our opponent's pretty hopelessly behind now. Scavenging Ooze, potentially what they search up with Grim Tutor to exile our graveyard. But uh, yeah, can just cast an Emrakul here and see what they're working with. Alright, and our opponent explodes before we get a chance to have a look on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, up against Toski, Barrow of Secrets. We've got a pretty promising hand. Multiple ways to deal with indestructible creatures. Commands can take care of it, and then Liliana if Toski is the only creature in play. Bit of ramp never hurts. Command can fill the graveyard for Ishkana. And then Liliana's likely to end up in the graveyard as well, adding Planeswalker as an extra type. So overall, pretty solid hand. Turn one, there is an elf. Could also take that out with command. Yeah, close call. I think keeping command as an answer to Toski might be better. So for now, I can Signet, and then next turn I could still both Mulch and Command, or just go with Liliana. Stalwart, so lots of tiny creatures and a Liberator. Okay, that one could potentially take out our Signet, so I'm gonna wanna Binding it. And then next turn we can double spell. Hopefully after they just play a Toski they could Toski and still hit us for one and draw, which is quite tempting. Perfect. Get to search for a dual land. And then command. Probably fine to take out Toski and look for land, hopefully. Or we could mulch first, but of course mulch is not going to put a land in graveyard. Alright, found a land. And then I could still Liliana minus, although we'll end up losing Liliana. Plusing Liliana also an option, since we have so many lands we don't mind discarding. And seems more efficient than just playing a mulch. So now we'll have the four card types for Ishkana, which we can play next turn to protect our Liliana. Opponent discarded a removal spell. So now we won't have to worry about Toski for another turn or two. Oracle's a good one. Don't have an immediate answer to it. Snakeskin Veil on top, good to know about. And a Sentinel. So lots of mana elves. Makes sense. Conduit could be quite useful as well. So for now, can mulch and then still play Ishkana. But can maybe hang on to Abandon Mire. Uh, 
and I don't mind plussing here. Get rid of Temple, can maybe play it out of the graveyard next turn with Conduit. And then can replay Binding, eventually Liliana, Dreadhorde General. Oracle is the main concern now, and there is a land on top. Primeval Bounty, points going big. So now they can gain 3 for each land they play, make beasts when playing creatures, and distribute plus 1 counters with non-creatures. And we know there's Animus incoming. So step 1, I guess, is going to be Channel Abandoned Mire. So I don't mess up my Scry. Get back Liliana, play Conduit. And then we can keep plossing Liliana to work up towards an ultimate, but might as well scry in the process. And a bobble. Do we have artifact in the graveyard already? We don't, so sure, I'll keep a bobble. And discard Wayfinder. Our opponent can still cast a Snakeskin Veil, which will actually give them 4 plus 1 counters total, so that's pretty good. So now Animus could take out Ishkana, and they'll get even more plus one counters at the same time. Plenty of lands on top, so Bounty's going off as well. They could replay Toski. So it could still be in trouble. Liliana not at its best when our opponent has a bunch of 1-1s in play. But we can still maybe achieve a Liliana ultimate. Could actually decline to send Ishkana to the command zone, so I can replay it with Conduit next turn although it would be my only play, and I might be more interested in playing a Binding out of the graveyard. Something bad happens to Conduit, I may regret not sending Ishkana back to the command zone, so let's just play it safe. Puna can still proliferate with Karn's Bastion as well, so we have to be mindful of that. So possible I just let Liliana go, so we can protect Dreadhorde General and draw cards with 1-2 Spider tokens. That may be slightly better here, since I don't see myself reaching ultimates and protecting Liliana. And then I don't want to double block Oracle since they can proliferate, so we'd have to triple block to take it out. That may still be worth it, but we're giving up a lot of cards in the process, of course. Yeah, triple block, Bono still proliferates. They lose Oracle, we know they're drawing a land next turn. Maybe that's okay, actually. Sorry, I'm okay, so I can bobble that. myself, since we know the opponent's top card. Binding on Bounty is not really a priority right now. We know our opponent can play Toski next turn, so we could always replay Ishkana. Opponent plays Toski, makes a beast. We can at least prevent him from drawing a bunch of cards. And then next turn I can Liliana minus. Or we can just Liliana minus now. Opponent gets to keep Stalwart, presumably. They can finish off Liliana, but we'll have drawn a few cards in the process. And then next turn I could just replay Liliana once again. Sure. Let's see what's on top. Ren and Seven, also useful. And pass it back. Get to draw Ren. And I doubt I'll ignore Liliana here. And Death Sprout's also interesting. So now I could go for Death Sprout's Ren make a giant token. And then wait on getting back Liliana. Sure, that seems reasonable too. Could also go with Ishkana, although then I'm a little bit short of casting a Desperate. So, run on 7 it is. And then we can keep up Desperate at instant speed if we'd like. Calm the trees. The trees can fight their own. 
although there's a chance your opponent draws another protection spell like Snakeskin Veil. But yeah, Conduit replaying Liliana over and over is also quite powerful. So we'll see how this turns out. Bone ongoing face. Block stalwarts. And take out the beast. Opponent draws. Extinction event, another answer to Toski, although it would also exile my tree folk. Plus with Ren first, see what we hit. And then Liliana could just start making zombies, or we can destroy the bounty before it gets out of hand. Can replay Ishkana. Yeah, let's go with the binding. Get rid of the primeval bounty. Alright, our opponent throws in the towel. Too much value from the conduit. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Up against the Grand Warlord Arata. Red Green Aggro. Got a decent hand if we can find another black source, but we're actually missing some ramp. So unless Grimflare can connect to Surveil early on, could actually not be the best. I'm gonna give it a shot. On the play, there's still a decent chance we get to connect once. And that's maybe all we need to find our second swamp. Hope of Girapur we can take out with Liliana. And then if they kill Grimflare, Liliana could also get it back. Intimidator can also kill with Liliana here. So that's going to be quite painful for them. Attack for two. And start milling. Probably fine to keep Oracle. And then land next so I can play it off the top. That's a perfect setup. Bolt Hounds, okay. Opponents will be able to finish off Liliana now, although that will add Planeswalker to the graveyard at least. And then, yeah, we set it up beautifully, Oracle into Command Tower off the top. Attack. Now we can keep setting up our Oracle with Grimflare. So, could draw the Mystic and then Boseju. Of course, there's a chance they kill Oracle, and then I may not want to be stranded drawing too many more lands. Mystic also not particularly exciting, but I'll keep Boseju, cast Casualties. So Delirium still only at 2, Creature and Planeswalker. Although if we channel Boseju, we could also add land to the graveyard. Opponent goes all out. So yeah, not hitting Casualties here. Although our opponent can sacrifice Hope of Girapur. In which case, I'll just play Ishkana. What's this? Three mana for Ambitious Assault. Pumping the team. Ouch. Okay. Milling Altar is going to be great with a Grim Flayer here. Adding Tribal as a card type to the graveyard. And I think I'm still attacking with Oracle. And then do I want a Celestus? Not really. Can keep land on top. Play land for free. And then time for casualties. Artifact, creature, land. Artifact, creature, land. And I'll play out Boseju. Okay, we are at 10, but pretty far ahead now. Put on missing green mana. Castle pumps Bolt Hounds. And our opponent explodes. Next turn we can play Ishkana and completely stabilize the board. So yeah, that was a fun interaction with our Grim Flayer setting up Oracle. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play up against a black white sacrifice deck. Our hand seems decent. Turn one Mystic, turn two Celestus plus either Class or Thoughtseize. And then Garruk. Could also be pretty good against Death Touch creatures.
turn one selfless savior. So yeah, Celestus, and then kind of like Thoughtseize. Okay, so see some life gain payoff cards. Lurus could also be quite good. And Bloodsheaf's Thirst, potentially an answer to Planeswalker, although their opponent's missing black mana. So we'll grab Lurus. Also very good with Selfless Savior, which can kind of keep looping it back. So next turn I could already play Garruk and fight to transform it. So it would be fighting the Pride Mate, but it makes indestructible. And then we have a one loyalty Garruk left. So we'd have to jump with a Mystic to protect it. Maybe worth it, or we can just uh, get a Vessel going or a Warlock class and then wait on Garruk until we can better protect him. So let's go with Vessel and then Sacrifice. See what we get. Okay, found our Snarl. That's an option. Or we can play Grim Flare, which is going to be pretty large here. Delirium is enabled, and we can play Grim Flare. Okay, so maybe forced to take it out with a Blood Chief's Thirst or Mutual Destruction at some point. And if they don't find Black Mana soon, we can get ahead with Garruk. Our opponent found the black for Thirst, so Grim Flare down, presumably. Nope, opponent's going for the Pilgrim first. Okay, Liliana's excellent, can plus on the Selfless Savior. And then opponent's going to make Pilgrim indestructible. So don't really want to attack into it with Grim Flare. If I attack, does our opponent block and use Selfless Savior is a question. They may not, in which case I get a free attack in, which may be worth it. And with a trample we at least get to mill a few more cards, even if they do set up the Pilgrim block. Could also Liliana plus on the Pilgrim and then attack. I think I'm going to attack with Grim Flare and assume that they're not going to block and make indestructible. But we'll see. Alright, damage happens. And a casualties we're pretty far from casting, although... I say that, we just need one more land. That being said, I think we're still fine to put it in Graveyard. Nightmare, on the other hand, should be quite effective. And we'll put Arena in Graveyard, adding Enchantment as well. So, yeah, this could be fine to keep a Nightmare on top. Could also play Ishkana and make some Spiders. Although, Liliana take out Savior for free is tempting. Although, we'll be under pressure from their creatures, so... Actually, let's just play Ishkana. And then next turn we can decide between Liliana or Nightmare. Authority, that's fine. Could potentially grow Pride Mates and uh, Priest here. And a Thirst kills a Grimflare. At least we got our value. So Liliana take out Savior. Or I can Warlock class activate, hope to still find a black source to play Nightmare. Or we can get Garruk going and transform it to eventually find Emrakul, which is also tempting. Kind of want to hit my land drop for the turn, so let's hope to find one. No black mana, but we did find a Mulch, which is probably better than Wayfinder, so we don't trigger Authority. And then Mulch should find some lands. Okay, there we go. Find my Swamp. And then now six card types in Graveyard. Next turn I can double spell Liliana and Garruk, which is pretty fitting. Or we can Nightmare, we'll see. There's the Priest. I wouldn't be able to take it out with Liliana. So we'll start with Liliana take out Savior, and then Garruk can fight whatever creature opponent doesn't make indestructible. Happy to help, but I'm taking the credit when we win. 
So we'll find Talwood Priest. And then now we've all these spider tokens to protect our planeswalkers. Okay, don't hate my spot. Next turn, can maybe tutor up Emrakul with a minus one. At least that's the hope. Alright, unfortunately your opponent concedes since they're too far behind already. Alright, so we got to see our Black Green Delirium deck in action, and as you can tell from this video length, I enjoyed playing it quite a bit. Always fun to get an Emrakul in play, and getting to cast it for potentially 5 or 6 mana is quite satisfying. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.